Hey, what's up, guys? I wanted to take a second to remind you, please hit that subscribe button. And if you like what we're doing and want to make a donation, you can do that via Cash App at American Made Channel. Now, let's jump into the video. Is it true that you're the new boss of the Gambino crime Absolutely family? Absolutely not. I'm the boss of my wife and my children. Well, I'm going to tell you, he, he wasn't a go outside, toss a ball around kind of guy. That he was not. Okay, my father pretty much, uh, he, he always well supported our household, but uh, he was a 24-7 street guy. That was his first priority, I guess. And, you know, I, I had written something in the book. Uh, the last time my father and I had the opportunity to meet, speak, embrace, it was actually the first time I actually had, I, I had the opportunity to touch my father in eight years because he was behind the glass for eight years when I was visiting him in Marion. And... Uh, I actually had asked, asked him, you know, I asked him a question about, you know, his perspective now as opposed to then and how I felt my perspectives had changed once I've had children. That I don't, I don't feel and think the same way I thought, you know, say pre-90 before I had my first child. You know, I was a hardcore guy like him. I believed in everything he said, and I still, I love and adore the man. And I, and I still worship him today. But I said, you know, he asked me a question, and I, my answer to him was that, you know, Dad, everybody's perspectives change in life. And the answer he had given me was quite the opposite. I mean, he, he looked at me and says, John, do I love differently? Sure, I do. He says, I have children. When I have children, I love like I never thought I could love. However, right now, my position in life, my beliefs, they're stronger now than ever. And what I, I took away from that conversation without pressing it was that for me as his son, that what he believed in, it was more important to him to instill that in me, to make me understand that he doesn't feel that he made a mistake in his life. He feels strong in his beliefs, that he's not, he'll never be compromised in those beliefs, and that, that's something that I should always respect. And, and that's something I still do t till today. You know, I was, I was raised in and out of visiting rooms. I've been visiting my father in prison. In fact, uh, my first birthday, my father did his first bid in Riverhead, Long Island. Okay? And my mother tells a story how she had, she had taken me there. She'd hold me up outside the gate, and my father would go to the window, and she'd you know, hold me up, and he'd wave by the window, and so on and so forth. You know, I, was, I was one years old. And then thereafter, I'd visit him as a five- and six- and seven-year-old boy in Lewisburg Penitentiary and so on. And... It, Reflecting back on all those thoughts and looking at my mother and how, you know, how she's aged as a result of all of that, all that my father had brought to the table, you know, and again, he certainly didn't know how to love my mother. He did. And he certainly didn't know how to love us. But I began to question, I would say to myself that it's almost like you're sacrificing something that you love more than yourself for something else. And that's what it looked like to me. And I just, I guess, I'm not as strong as my father. I wasn't as strong as him. I couldn't take that situation and say, you know what? Uh, I love my wife. I love my children. I uh, love my mother. I love my siblings. However, the streets have to come first. So you know what? They'll have to do without me. It was a lot harder for me to come to those terms than it was for my father. 